Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This is the first of a three video series on the free, yes I said free, 4NEC antenna simulation program. In this video, I'm going to present some basics regarding the free 4NEC2 antenna simulation program just to kind of give you a step up on how it, how it works and, and how to uh, uh, create your antenna models. In the next video, I'm going to use these very basics to model two different antennas. The first will be a simple dipole antenna. The second is a simple inverted V. In the third video, I will move forward into a virtual experiment with a whole band 80 meter inverted V antenna. Now I will provide the design files for all of the antennas that are described in these three videos in the description below. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified when new videos come out. So let's talk about the free 4NEC2 antenna modeling program and how to create a model. We need to do a quick 4NEC2 primer. To begin with, the NEC program is three-dimensional. That means that we have to be operating in a three-dimensional space. You have your Z, which is the distance above ground. You have the X, direction, that's minus x, this is plus x, and then you have the y direction, this is minus y, excuse me, this is minus y, this is plus y. And so when you are planning the model for your antenna, you have to th think in three directions. Now, one of the things that makes it easy is if you plan your antenna so that it is along one of the axes. So if we're going to model, let's say, a dipole and we plan our dipole this way, so it's directly above the y-axis, then that means that for the entire length of this antenna, x equals zero and we don't have to mess with anything. Then the only values that we have to be concerned about are z, which is the height here above ground, and y, which is the distance from the center out to the ends. And by convention, we generally want to put the antenna center at zero. So we, we try to put the antenna center at zero. So it extends an equal distance in each direction away from y equals zero. Now, the next thing that we have to remember is that for NEC2, uh, can operate in either meters or feet. Now I've tried using it, you can set it to inches, and I've tried using inches, but I haven't been terrifically successful in, in making it behave with inches. So choose meters or feet. You can actually do it in terms of wavelength too. Um, but I've never done that. I don't know how well it behaves. I generally choose feet and then all your dimensions, even the dimension that of the, the radius of your antenna material is in feet. Thirdly, and this is the part that people have the most problem with, we have antennas are created with wires and segments. And this is confusing to some. So 
think of it this way. You have a wire, and here's my, my antenna. It is this wire that extends from here to here. Now, for analysis purposes, 4NEC2 needs these, this wire broken up into smaller segments. Okay? Now, generally speaking, you are going to want an odd number of segments. And you say, why do you want an odd number of segments? Because, like, this could be a dipole here, okay? And you say dipole, it's just a single wire. That doesn't make sense to me. A dipole. So we have to have a, a center insulator somewhere, right? And we tend to think, we tend to think, oh, I have a wire here, it comes here, and I got a wire here, and it comes here, and this is where I connect my my uh, transmission line. Well, what you do in 4NEC2 in these antenna modeling programs is you draw a single wire, which is the entire, let's say you're doing a half wave dipole. This is a complete half wave long. And then you insert your source in the center segment. Now what 4NEC2 does is they, they immediately interpret that as a wire here, a wire here, and your source here. You can also do this, put a, have a single segment wire down here, and you can insert transmission line between two, this segment here and this single segment wire you have down here. And then you insert the source here. Now you have a source down here. You have your transmission line segment. You have your center insulator. And all of this is interpreted by 4NEC2 as a wire to here, a wire to here, your transmission line coming down here, and down here is your signal generator. And there are specific rules about how big the segments have to be relative to each other and various things, but I'm not going to get into that here. So this is how you add sources. And, and what about traps? I want to make a trapped antenna. Well, what you end up doing then with a trapped antenna is you insert what they call a load at a particular segment. And the load consists of, let's say, a parallel, a parallel inductor and capacitor on both sides. So now that's inserted there. So what does it look like to 4NEC2, this? Well, it interprets that as I now have a trap here, which is a parallel tuned circuit of this inductor and this capacitor. So that's how, that's the basic uh, tutorial about how all of this comes together. So there you have it, the basics of the 4NEC2 mod antenna modeling program. In the next video in this series, I will apply these basics in modeling two very basic antennas, a simple dipole and a simple inverted V. If you have found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified when new videos come out. Thank you so much for watching, and until then, toodaloots.